All right, Olivia, are you there? Yes. Oh, I think you're, is your camera off? Or? No, it's here. I did turn okay. it off accidentally. Okay. I didn't mean to. I promise you. <laughs> okay. All right, welcome to As If Quarantine Basement Tapes. Till the day we have the lovely and talented Miss Olivia Devil coming to us live all the way from down under in, is it sunny there, sunny Australia? It should be. It's really bad weather today, though, but we'll pretend. Yes, yeah, super sunny Australia. <laughs> well, let's just, hopefully it'll clear up later in the day. Yeah. So Olivia is a actress. She comes from a longstanding acting dynasty, actually. And now she's making her own way in the film world. She just landed a new role in The Secret Society of Second Born Royals on Disney+. Plus. Congratulations. So talk to us a little bit about that project. So that was an, I mean, it's, you know, it's life changing. It's Disney. Um, so that was awesome. I got it whilst I was still on a television show. It was really crazy. It, like my contract ended and then I got Disney nine days later. So I like flew back to my hometown, Melbourne. I was living in Sydney and then I had to pack my bags and essentially go straight to um, Toronto. But it was, you know, it's a wonderful story. I really love the mo kind of modern twist to it. It wasn't like, it's not your normal kind of princess story. Um, so I fell in love with the script immediately. I fell in love with my character, Roxana. I think she's hilarious. I think she's really interesting and I really, really enjoyed playing her. Um, and no, it was in a fantastic experience. Like no, it's nothing like Australian film and TV. So it was this whole new experience for me as well. So it was great. I loved it. I loved every second of it. So you got your career started on Home and Away, which is an Australian soap opera that has really made a lot of stars. I think Nicole Kidman's been on that show. The Hemsworths yeah, were on that show. How'd you end up getting involved in that? Like, what was the audition process like? Like, how'd you come to land that role that really became a major breakout for you? Yeah, so before that, I think I got my agent when I was about 10, and that was after mm -hmm. years of begging my mum. As you said, yeah, my, my mother and my grandfather are both actors. So I was on a kids' TV show before that called Little Lunch um, when I was 11 to 12. And so that started, so that was my first ever gig. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of, and then I just kept auditioning. And then, no, I just, they just, I just got an, uh, an audition come in from my agent um, and then I got a callback and I did another callback and then they said, oh, can we, you know, would you be prepared to move to Sydney? And that was a big thing because my whole family here is here and I had two younger siblings. Um, so my grandparents offered to move up with me. So then I said, yes, I would be ready to. So then I got the job and I moved to Sydney with my grandparents and I lived with them for two years. And then my parents moved up for the final year. So huge, huge life-changing shift at such a young age um, to be away from my parents. And, you know, I'd fly back every weekend to see my friends. But, yeah, it was really life-changing. And I think I will never kind of forget how much they – like that's, you know, that's a really big thing, letting your parents letting their child yeah. go, to go and do something that they're passionate about. Especially so, so young. It's so young. Like 13 is insane. Um, and yeah, like that, that, in, uh, that experience in general really shaped me as an actor. And I think it's some of the best learning that you can ever have is on a soap because it's so fast paced and there's so many people mm -hmm. involved and you're such, you're such a part of a, of a jigsaw puzzle, which I think is, is lovely. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed being an equal to everyone. And, you know, if I, I just think about if I'm tired and I had to get up at 5am, the lighting department or the makeup department had to get up at three. Yeah. So, you just have to think, and I think being on a show where there were so many people involved to just spit out television so quickly really makes you appreciate how much work goes into it. Um, yeah, and like you know, we were getting twelve page, you know, twelve pages of lines a day, and we're doing twelve scenes, so maybe it's more than that. And you know, you you've got an hour to film each scene, so it's just it's so fast paced that you really have to just know your stuff. So having that experience was so fantastic then going into Disney, which was a lot more like, you know, we'd shoot three scenes a day, take hours, um, <laughs> was lovely. And I don't think there's a better or a worse. They're just two very different ways of filming um, on different budget oh, scale. Yeah. Soap opera before. filming's a whole different animal from any whole type whole of production thing. schedule, yeah. actually, even like theater, even commercial films like blockbuster films and all that it's a whole different schedule because everything's so fast-paced 
it's insane. Um, but so yeah, I was, I will, I will always treasure my time on Home and Away and the things that it taught me. So with acting being so much in your blood, when did you know you wanted to act? Like, did you grow up on set with your grandparents and mom or was it just a thing you knew they did and you felt like you wanted to follow in the family footsteps? How did you develop your own genuine interest in acting? So I think it was sparked. My mum tells this story of my grandfather, who's a vaudevillian slapstick comic, so we did a lot of stage work. Mm -hmm. We went to one of his performances and I would have been like four or five. And he was like, does anyone want to come up on stage? And I was like, shut up and ran on stage. And then we started doing patter. Like we started playing off each other. Like I got up on stage in front of 300 people or more and then just started performing with my grandfather who was like 75. And it was just this five-year-old and this 75-year-old joking together. So I think that's when they realised. They were like, oh, God, she actually really likes it. Um, I did a commercial at quite a young age and then realized that this was a thing you could get paid for and then I really wanted to do it so my mum let me go to some more auditions and then you know if I didn't get it I'd be heartbroken and she went oh okay maybe we're just gonna wait a couple of years and then I just started begging and begging and begging and begging and then she kind of gave in so we got a proper agent and then I started getting I then then like jobs I'm so lucky I've been very consistent with my jobs which has been fantastic uh-huh. not like it's been humbling now because I haven't um haven't acted on anything since the Disney movie, so it's been good. It's been like a year of no work, which is important to recognize that that's what it is like an actor. Sometimes you just don't get jobs. Um, but pre that, I was like job after job. So it's it was I was very very lucky in that sense to be working so consistently. So I think they definitely fueled it because I was surrounded by it. However, it was never ever enforced upon me. Um, in fact, it was kind of like, this is a really hard job if you're wanting to do this. Like, I'd recommend not doing acting because, you know, the heartbreak's pretty bad, but they could just see how passionate I was about it and that it wasn't for the money or it wasn't for the fame. It was just because I loved doing it so much. And like, it was just, it made me so, and still to this day, performing makes me the happiest. I'm happy. I'm happiest when I'm performing. So, yeah. So because you've been in the industry so long, what would you describe as your first major role? Would you say it was that time on stage with your grandfather or would it be Home and Away? And I know you had a few other like small film credits and other roles before that too. I think, I don't, I don't think I'd credit, I think Little Lunch, which was the kids TV show I did first, mm-hmm. I would see as my most major role as that's when like, um, like my fellow peers would grow up on it. So it's oh. funny, a lot of older people and young, older people would watch Home and Away and say that they, they love the show. But Little Lunch still to this day plays in primary schools. Like it had such an impact on the educational system in Australia and that was so nice. So anyone like my age or younger still watches Home and Away. Like it's still so ingrained in primary schools and that was so lovely that something that I was in has become part of Australian culture. Again, like Home and Away, which is such a classic, this is like Little Lunch was this thing that then became, oh, we watch this when it's raining outside or this is for educational purposes or these kids are like you. So making something that kids could identify with and see themselves as was really lovely. And that was such a positive first experience to work on with great people. Um, And then, and that was a real shift then working. I was the only child in Home and Away, whereas in Little Lunch, we were all kids. So it was a big shift. But I'd say that Little Lunch was kind of my first major gig. So what was it like making that transition from doing things that were heavily much more definitely youth oriented to going to the world of soap operas and then transitioning into the world of something majorly commercial like Disney Plus? Yeah. I think you have to be versatile as an actor. I think if you start getting uncomfortable with being a, like, if you, if you start getting uncomfortable and not able to play specific roles, you're, you're stopping yourself. Um, I think the most fascinating thing is when you see an actor play so many different roles. Uh-huh. Like you're going, oh my God, that's him in that movie. Wow, I didn't even realize. Um, and I think all the characters I've played so far have been quite different to show my acting abilities and the work that I can put in to be versatile and still hold some of my own truth whilst performing, but, you know, really, really changing up my characters. Um, I don't necessarily find it difficult because we're actors. This is what we do. We play, 
we 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 shape shift. So if you're not able to do that, I or if you're uncomfortable doing that, I, I I would find it difficult to see how your trajectory would go as you age and mature. So I haven't found it difficult at all. I've really enjoyed it. I guess is the answer to my to your question. So because you didn't have like because you started acting at a young age, you didn't have like you know the traditional like acting training conservatory route. Where would you say most of your craft developed as an actor would you say it came from watching your parents or from work with directors on set or just learning acting techniques from different older actors you may have worked with yeah so I think it's a lot of that um because I moved with my grandparents and my you know both of my grandparents have performers as well that was fantastic like I got to run lines with two like Accomplished actors. Actors. Yeah, every night. And then with my mom, I still I still do all of my self tapes with my mom, no matter where I am. I'll still call her and run it with her and get her opinion on it. Um, and then as you said, like on Home and Away, you have stars there who are just have been in it so long. And then I have this wonderful acting coach, Genevieve Hegney, who has been a real life changer for me. Like the way that she I think I I owe a lot of my like growth or my my backstory work to her the way that I kind of decipher break down scripts and um break down emotive language and stuff uh, I can I can thank her for that she's fantastic she's an amazing woman um I do want to go and study though I want to go and study at a university called Le Coq it's an acting university in Paris which kind of it studies the form of clownism but I want to go and do it um to take away from just looks because I feel like with acting now, it's insanely oriental on how you look and how you can become attractive. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't believe acting surrounds that. I think acting is about embodying a message. So if I'm able to do that and take away from constantly trying to look good, I think that'll really help me grow and expand as an actor. Um, so that's where I want to go and study. Um, but I also really like Unter Hagen's method. I really, I read a lot of her books. So I still, I still do work. I still always do work. I will always watch workshops listen to people break down things because you can never stop learning with that this craft that's what we're so lucky about you can't get to the top because everyone is like we're performing art and art is so subjective everyone has an opinion on your art so you can always always get better um and i'm just starting like i'm just starting out so what are some ways you like to approach getting into character for your roles you like to journalize your characters you like to walk around and in in characters your characters how do you approach crafting a character you're playing so I think a lot of it is I will um it depends so I think with Home and Away it's difficult we weren't given like with Home and Away I wasn't given much backstory because uh-huh. I just, you just come in and then you grow with your character through three years so that's a very different kind of script and character development because you're developing with the character as you go there's no backstory I mean there's some but you only go in with that and then that character's going to shift and evolve in four months time so it's very difficult to kind of have like a really solid backstory with Roxana for example she's a better she's a better example so we had information um I decided to give her an English accent which gave me a lot more to work with so I I got an I got an English um voice coach we, I really really worked with her I kind of went back into the history of what she could have done um I write a lot, like I write, I think more so I will really break down the script and her feelings and how she's feeling opposed to a massive backstory. Because I think the moment you, um, I've never been a massive backstory person. I'm more so a current person of going, we're seeing a pocket of her life. How can I make this pocket that, that the audience is seeing as real and authentic as possible? So I will break down the script. I'll go through each sentence. I'll write I'll highlight it. I'll do colors kind of depending on my growth and the the dips and the arcs. So I'll focus a lot more on that than I will backstory, I think. And that's kind of how I do it. So we have obviously been in quarantine. We've all been subject to Corona. We've been dealing with that for a while. You're still under lockdown. What have you been taking this time to do? Have you been reading more acting books? Is trying to, or you've been trying to more enjoy the time off? Like what's, What's quarantine been like for you over for in Olivia Diebel land and down under Diebel. Australia? Um, it's consistent of, I'm in my final year of high school still. So I have oh, my wow, final okay. school exams. Yeah. 
have my final school exams pretty soon, actually. Um, so it's been good. It's actually been good because I think I was concerned about how I was going to juggle um, schooling and work at the same time. So that's been good. That's been fine. Um, I've developed a concerning obsession with chili oil. I will have like two <laughs> tablespoons of chili oil with every meal. Like I'll put it on my toast in the morning and then I'll have like soup or something and then I'll put it in that and then I'll just accompany it it with every meal so it's been I don't know if that's a good thing but it's it's a thing like it's a thing I can say I eat a lot of chili oil um how that happened did someone bring you some during quarantine or did you just spot it at the grocery store our family friend because we started like my family just to kind of keep us sane we do like like zoom dinner calls so like we Mm -hmm. cook together with the family not me god no I can't cook for the life of me my dad would like zoom one of his friends and we'd cook and then we'd all eat together and she was like, oh, my God, you have to get this chili oil. And it's just perfect. It's like they're almost like chips because they're so crunchy. And then the oil just like it hits you, but it's not overbearing. And then I just have it with every single meal. So that's been a fun little thing. I don't know if that's good or not. I'm a little I've, bit concerned with my gut health. I've recently I'm- developed a hot sauce obsession. Right. Well, so you understand. You put it on everything. It feels- I tried the world's hottest hot sauce the other day. Is it good? Or yeah, but I don't me. recommend more than one dot of this. Right. Like whatever, I, and I don't even mean like a teaspoon. I literally mean a dot. Once the yeah. first dot comes out, that's it. Don't that's don't it. use any more. How much this. did you put on? Literally a dot. It cleared oh, and that was- sinuses. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like I'll eat. I'm like, oh, I'm kind of blocked up, and I'll just. It's not good, actually. I shouldn't glamorize. Like I eat it, which is bad. It's just chili fries. Like, like there are much worse vices in the world. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But I don't, I think my parents are getting concerned now. Like they're walking <laughs> to the kitchen and I'm like, and they're expensive. Anyway, um, I've really gotten back into like, I don't play an instrument, but listening to music in general, I'm just really enjoying now. Um, I'm just really in, kind of enjoying chilling and listening to music. I started writing, which has been awesome um, and really nice. Nice to not um, – and listening to, like, writers talk about character development as well is really interesting because I've always been in front of the screen and only had to focus on one character. So it's been really nice to um, to have that other perspective and try that. Um, online shopping addiction has been pretty bad too. <laughs> been pretty bad. Where do you like to shop? I'm a vintage person, so I'm really – I do eBay a lot. Oh, okay. I do eBay a lot. Yeah, eBay and Grailed, and yeah, so those are my two. Grailed. Grailed. Oh, it's dangerous. But eBay has some real gems because no one really goes on eBay anymore. So you have, like, these people who don't know. Like, I got this um, Von Dutch sample T-shirt from, like, 2000, and only five of them were made. And I got it for, like, 50 bucks, and its resale is so much more. Oh, my God. Wow. Exactly. So it's, like, because cause Grailed knows the worth, and there are really people who are good oh, at Grailed. Yeah. Like those people, people are connoisseurs of resale. Exactly. But people aren't good on eBay. They're like, I need to sell this. I don't care anymore because I've had it for so long. And yeah, I'm I like, just want this out of my life. And I'm like, 25 bucks for this uh, This thing seems fair. And then it'll be like 500 bucks resale. So eBay's good. eBay's a good little. I mean, I've just exposed myself to everyone who's going to watch this. Um, and they're now going to they're now going to take my tricks of hacking it on ebay but that's okay i'm willing to share that um it's been lovely spending time with my family because i travel so much like in between sydney and melbourne or la so it's been really nice just spending time with my siblings i really get along with my siblings so it's been nice just us i guess being a normal family and like doing stuff together so that's been really lovely um yeah that's kind of been it it's all a blur like, we've been in lockdown for, like, six months now, so I just don't – I don't know what I've been doing, really. Just got a, gotten, like, routine day-to-day, like – Yeah, a lot of it involves sleeping. I'm sleeping a lot. Um, well, you've been working so consistently all these years, you probably yeah. deserve a year off. <laughs> that's, that's what I said. But also, like, as I said before, I kind of thrive more when I'm working. Mm-hmm. Which I think everyone's like, you should get a hobby, and I guess it's, like – acting was both my hobby and my passion and my job like because I was working it was like well no this is filling up my time this gives me joy and I'm getting paid for it and then that was gone and I was like I I here's the thing 
I don't have anything else to do that I started eating chili oil. That's a pretty good, like, sign that someone's, <laughs> like, bored. <laughs> so, but, yeah. what, you, what kind of work would you like to be doing post-coronavirus, post-lockdown? Do you have, like, any projects you might be looking at or any aspirations for what kind of role you'd like to play next? Um, auditions are just starting back up. So it's been really lovely being able to just put down a self tape of someone else. So that's been awesome. I've had, like, I have two auditions this afternoon that I've got to do. So that's been really nice oh, getting back in. Yeah. Thank you. It's just, it's just everything's opening back up again. So it's just nice to kind of feel like I'm an actor again. Um, I really want to do more stage stuff. Um, or mm-hmm. Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare. I love doing Shakespeare work. Like I think some of my happiest moments, I was performing Joan of Arc from Henry V in French. Um, oh, wow. I speak, yeah, I speak fluent French. So it was this, and that was kind of the most like proud I've ever felt. Um, I think there's a real shift between screen and stage. I think the sense of like you only get one shot and you have to impact these people. They can't rewatch it. They're paying to see you, for you to change them in this hour's session and then it's gone. So I think that I really enjoy that. I really enjoy the adrenaline, the adrenaline rush of that. Um, so I'd love to do more s- stage work. I'm. It's tough. I think I don't. I don't preempt. I'm not like, oh my god, I'd love to do a film like this. I just go, well, what scripts are being sent to me, and is this a, is this a story that I'd want to tell? More so, I guess. All right. Well, thank you very much, Olivia, and good luck with what you've got going on next in your auditions this afternoon. Thank you very much. And Asif is very much looking forward to following whatever you do next. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Christopher. Yeah, you're welcome, dear.